Um, Atlanta, St. Louis. Atlanta ended up pulling this one out at the end, 31 to 27. You know, the Rams were surprisingly competitive in this game. They kept it close. They had a lead for much of the game. Steven Jackson played great. Mark Bulger was solid. Um, the defense made some big plays. They forced like three turnovers and didn't have any themselves. <coughs> they got good pressure on Matt Ryan. Um, you know, there's really not a lot to say about the Rams. I think they had the second pick or the third pick. They were competitive in this game. They were playing hard for Jim Hazlitt, who I know they want to keep around. From everything I've heard, the um, the Rams want to keep the players want to keep Jim Hazlitt. So let's look at the Falcons because they're playoff bound. If you look at uh, Matt Ryan's stats the last couple weeks, uh, when he was playing, of course, this week against the Rams, uh, last week against Minnesota, the week before against Tampa Bay, he's not been playing that well. So. You look at those numbers, he's played okay, but he hasn't been playing great. You ask yourself, has he hit the rookie wall? And then you factor in the fact that next week they're going to travel to Arizona, play a playoff game against Kurt Warner, two-time MVP, one-time Super Bowl MVP, who has a lot of experience in this league. Arizona has no playoff experience, but bear with me. You have a rookie quarterback leading this team. He looks like he's hit the rookie wall because he hasn't played well in the last month or so. So, I know a lot of people were jumping up and down when they saw this game come up, and you're all ready to go put your money on the Atlanta Falcons because the Arizona Card Cardinals have been playing so bad lately. You know, they got blew blown out against New England. Uh, they lost a couple other really ugly games, but um, before you do that, how safe do you feel gambling on a rookie quarterback who looks like he's hit the rookie wall and a young team that hasn't seen the playoffs in four years going on the road? So be careful about the Falcons. It would be so easy to pick them to beat the Cardinals in a heartbeat, and I probably will. But before you go bet your the deed to your house on it, think about it. Uh, I'm just saying, I'm probably going to end up picking the Falcons too, but think about it. How much do you trust a rookie quarterback? I'm, I'm, I, I just feel the need to point that out. Um, what else do we got? One second here. Um, Patriots, Buffalo, 13 to nothing. I watched most of this game. Uh, the wind was, <laughs> wind was something else, man. Um, if, if you didn't get a chance to see the clips, the um, goalposts very nearly fell over, I swear to God. Um, whenever there was like a kick or a punt or a kickoff, it looked like the ball was shot, like somebody, some sharpshooter just shot the ball out of the air. Just stuff like that. It was, <laughs> it was funny. Um, as for the game, um, you know, New England had everything going their way in this game. Buffalo, um, it was a coaching, uh, New England dominated the coaching battle, and that's where they won this game. They squeezed points out of every opportunity they had when they scored the touchdown, when they kicked those field goals, they were squeezing out points. Buffalo couldn't squeeze out any points, I mean, they went for field goals when they should have been going for touchdowns, they missed those field goals, they screwed up in, you know last minute clock management so even though they gained more yards than New England even though their quarterback played better even though their running back probably played better they lost this game they got shut out and watching this game you know New England was getting all the breaks New England was having things go their way so sometimes there's not much you can do but I will say that Buffalo played an extremely poorly coached game um, Trent Edwards threw the ball way too much considering the conditions even though Buffalo was down um, They were playing for field goals when they should have been playing for touchdowns They were playing for touchdowns when they should have been playing for field goals <coughs> You know, uh, I don't know But okay, I, I, I hate the Patriots, but I will say you know credit to them after Tom Brady went down people left them for dead They took a quarterback who had not started in close to a decade and turned in an 11 and 5 season with the guy. They won a lot of close games and they came together 
and somehow they did it. And they're 11 and 5, they're out of the playoffs, but I have to give credit to them because nobody saw, thought they could go 11 and 5 after Tom Brady went down and they pulled it off. Bengals Chiefs, uh, not a lot to say here. As per usual, I like to follow Tony Gonzalez. Five catches, 53 yards, and a touchdown. He ends another Pro Bowl, probably all pro season. <coughs> uh, Cedric Benson. I'm continuing to watch this guy because if he becomes a great back now, that that's the funniest thing in the world. And it worked out for both sides. The Bears got Matt Forte. And now if the Bengals have their franchise running back in Cedric Benson, um... Lashings of ginger beer for everyone, I guess. Worked out for everybody. Uh, there's nothing really interesting to say about this game. The Bengals won 16-6. to Larry Johnson wants out. I do not blame him. Uh, I don't know where he's going to go in this offseason if he does leave. Probably like, I don't know, he seems like he belongs in Oakland or some shithole like that. Alright, uh, Packers 31, Lions 21. It, it happened. Sick O and 16. And, you know, the game itself pretty much played out as, as expected. The Green Bay defense isn't very good. The Lions were able to move the ball offensively. They ran it all right. They passed it pretty well. Calvin Johnson had a big game. <coughs> I think they even forced a turnover or two. And they won the penalty battle. But at the end of the day, their defense couldn't do much of anything. I mean, Aaron Rodgers had a huge game. Um, they had two running backs dominate. I read somewhere this was the first time in NFL history a team had a quarterback throw for 300, two running backs run for 100, and two wide receivers receive for 100. So, yeah, I mean, they, they had the one turnover, obviously, but it, it just was not enough. So, their own 16... They were, they were offensive to the NFL and how bad they were. They deserve every loss they have. They deserve to be 0-16, but I'm going to say they seem like nice guys. I'm not being sarcastic. Rod Marinelli seems like a great guy. He wasn't, you know, making excuses like Mike Martz would do. He wasn't being a jackass about it. The players, too. The players were great sports about this. They never gave up. Even in this game, the last game, they didn't stop trying. They went balls to the wall trying to win this game, the game before that, and the game before that. They never gave up. They just were not good enough to win a game. But I have to say, I I feel, I kind of feel for them because as people, they're good, and as players, they never quit. Uh, Colts 23, Titans 0. Colts close out the season effectively. Peyton Manning played one series. I wanted him to play more, but he went 7-7, seven 95 seven, yards and a touchdown. <clears throat> you got you let the guy go out on a good note, I guess, so that's what happened. He probably is going to win MVP. I'll make another video about this later, why he should. Um, he passed 4,000 yards. He threw a touchdown. You couldn't ask for much more. There's nothing much else to take from this game because so many backups played. <clears throat> um, you know, the Titans really never did anything offensively. They couldn't run the ball, pass the ball. Obviously, they didn't care much to play this game because, uh, you know, nobody really played well for the Titans. Nobody really made a play. I don't think it's a concern to them, but you don't want to go into the playoffs that cold. I mean, they got blown off the field w one way or another. Colts, um, it was mainly a time to look at backups. I think they have some running back named Leon Ball. I can't remember his first name. It starts with an L. Something Ball. But he was bit, he had a great game. He looked better than Najee Davenport to me. I'm not really a Najee Davenport fan. Or as I call him, Dookie. Um, Dallas Clark set a franchise record. Marvin Harrison became number two all-time on the receptions list behind only Jerry Rice. So there's a chance he will retire this offseason or be somewhere else, so big ups to him because he's one of the all-time greats, and he always had one of the best attitudes about it. I wanted to see more of Roy Hall, but he only had one catch. 
Uh, Colts defense, backup defense, got a lot of pressure on Vince Young, Kerry Collins, Chris Sims, whoever. So that was good because they're going to need some depth on the defensive line in the playoffs.